It's 420 somewhere, and right now that somewhere is right here. Welcome to The Cannabis Show. I'm Janae Burris, seeker of weed wisdom, and here's your host, gracious giver of cannabis knowledge, Jake Brown. Hey, thanks to everyone tuning into The Cannabis Show. We talk all things weed. Hashtag all things weed. And that's the serious marijuana news along with the fun stuff as well. If you finish, visit thecannabis.co right now, you can read about Jorge Cervantes' tips for growing cannabis in any climate. You can also get the lowdown on the new $160 million greenhouse being built in New Mexico and watch the cannabis weed critic Soham Shah's video strain review of Cherry G Diesel. Janae, how are you? Well, I'm wide awake and ready to learn. Teach me. Hey, I am wide awake on too much coffee. Thanks, <laughs> producer Vince. He always tells me how bad the office coffee is. This is the first time I've chosen to indulge. I feel uncomfortable. Oh, you look uncomfortable. Thank you. Let's get into it. Here is the week in weed. Starting in California, experts are predicting that celebrity weed brands may have an advantage in the state's new recreational market. Who would have guessed that California likes celebrities? Oh, yeah, from the big screen to the Oval Office and all the way to the grow room. We <laughs> like them very much. And while no one knows who will receive the first recreational licenses in the state, existing medical marijuana dispensaries could have a leg up. And that's why celebs like Willie Nelson, several of Bob Marley's children, Whoopi Goldberg, Tommy Chong, and Snoop Dogg are hustling to get their branded weed products on shelves. Damien Marley, for example, partnered with another company in the cannabis space to buy a former prison in Coalinga, California, and turn it into a 77,000 square foot weed facility. Which has to be really disappointing to at least a few prior inmates. <laughs> uh, unfortunately for the famous, it's still illegal to trademark your marijuana on the federal level, so State Assemblyman Rob Bonta has proposed state trademarks in a bill that also bans weed-themed billboards near freeways, so basically most of California if Saturday Night Live sketches are to be believed. Ah, uh, and he also wants to develop tests for stone drivers. Now, let's go to Albania, or uh, the Delaware of Europe, as it's <laughs> called. Right. Fun fact number one, both Mother Teresa and the Belushi brothers are of Albanian descent. Ooh. Fun fact number two, Albanians love growing weed, which is why the uh, Albanian government is deploying 3,100 officers to crack down on cultivators in the country. Authorities destroyed 2.5 million plants there last year alone, and that was actually a quadruple increase over the previous year. Okay, that sums it up on Albania, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Moving on, a retired California preacher was busted in Texas with over 400 grams of cookies, and we're not talking about communion wafers, uh, <laughs> in what turned out to be a tragic story. Philip Blanton, a former Pentecostal minister and prison counselor, is a medical marijuana patient in his home state, but learned the hard way, Texas doesn't care. Oh, man. Blanton was going to visit his hospitalized granddaughter in Houston. He told ABC affiliate KTRK Houston, quote, I'm a grandpa, so I'm thinking like a grandpa. Come and on. grandpa's stash included about four ounces of cannabis flour and dozens of infused cookies. The latter alone could land him a hefty sentence as much as five to 99 years or life plus a $10,000 fine. Now let's go to the cannabis policy and business writer, Alicia Wallace's with this week's quick hit. <laughs> Apparently Alicia is now plural. Colorado's medical marijuana registry is going electronic with a new online system that can churn out red cards for patients in a couple of days. But to some residents, the switch hasn't come free of glitches. The transition has resulted in a spike in wait times for mailed applications. The turnaround time that was 35 days or under now is in the realm of six to eight weeks. While the registry hired temporary employees to clear the mail-in backlog and address the slew of phone and email queries, an additional hiccup came when some patients who tried to register online hit a barrier. Their doctor needed to register first. Registry officials say they expect to clear the backlog and return to the 35-day turnaround by the 1st of April. Some lawmakers say 35 days is still far too long and have called on Governor John Hickenlooper to intervene in the matter. The registry will be completely online by 2018. For The Cannabis, I'm Alicia Wallace with this week's Quick Hit. All right, thanks, Alicia. Our first guest is CEO of the Julian Marley's cannabis company, Juju Royal. Give it up for Travis Belcher, everybody. Hey, Jake. Thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. All right, so how do you get involved with 
well, uh, you know, a legend uh, who has a really wide variety of cannabis products now. So originally I came from the entertainment industry and Julian and I had a mutual friend. Okay, uh, so you so knew a guy. Like, yeah. And where were you based at this time? Atlanta. Okay, so you're in Atlanta. Right. You've got a, fr a guy knows Julian. He's like, all right, you got to meet Travis. Right. Or were you like, I need to meet Julian? It was a little bit of both. Okay, I like yeah, that. It was a little bit of both. Um, I did a lot of uh, reggae shows back in the day. I used to be in the nightclub business and music business for a little bit. Okay. So I just kept my uh, relationships and resources and reached out when we decided to develop this concept and idea. And where did this idea start? Was it like, hey, we're going to open a dispensary? Or are we just going to... Uh, where do you start when you're a celebrity weed brand? We just wanted to create... The idea was just to create a brand. Okay. Just a brand. And we wanted... The, uh, the model was to co-op with producers and processors in the industry. So we never had a plan to... We do have a future plan of opening up a, um, a flagship dispensary, uh, hopefully in Vegas or New York somewhere. Vegas That's looks like it's going to be the spot. Yeah. Everything I read about Vegas is like uh, money going in. Uh, I know that they're really excited. So that would be the flagship store. But you started off with product. What was like the, the first product in the cannabis space? Um, it was our disposable vape pen in Washington. Okay. Yeah. So you went into vape pens, and were, were you going like uh, THC, CBD, THC. a little bit of both? Yeah, CO2. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, and so you started off in vape pens in Washington. Yes. Um, but you've kind of expanded like recently. When I I'm trying to like keep up at this point. Right. Um, but like, where are you at now? So, California, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, Puerto Rico just expanded into Puerto Rico. Um, Wait, what, when did you get into Puerto Rico? Well, we just signed a licensing agreement with a producer and processor down there about two months ago. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, wait, so, uh, and so that'll be kind of a mix of medical and recreational, it sounds like? Uh, medical at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but recreation is soon to come. It looks like they're fast-tracking the <laughs> recreational uh, market or program. Now, so. the big trend like we covered up top is the now celebrity weed strains i've covered them all uh i've covered the good uh, tommy chong's was great i've covered the bad snoop uh, you got to work on that stuff man good lord <laughs> it was just it, it was real bad um how do you go about coming up with you know a signature line that reflects julian so Julian is very engaged and involved with our process when we select strains and work on our genetics. So we've been working on a genetic uh, program project for the last six, six months oh. where he was involved. His favorite strain is lamb's bread. Okay, uh, well, uh, yeah, right. that's so, my fiance's favorite strain too. So oh, now okay. she's going to be really happy to hear this. I'll let him know. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so he's uh, very instrumental when we decide what strains. Uh, so he's, he, of course, he enjoys testing all of the strains. <laughs> uh, so we've got four proprietary strains we're releasing um, in April. Oh, uh, so that's just right around the corner. Is right. it like a like 420 launch kind of thing? Sort of, yeah. A little mm -hmm. pri prior to 420. Smart, because there's yeah. always so much going around on right. 420. That yeah, we don't like, want to get okay. lost in what's going on with 420. <laughs> the green noise, as right. I call it. <laughs> the green noise, that's good. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so walk me back just a, a couple steps. So when it's like, hey, uh, you know, I really like lamb's bread. Um, is it going out trying to find those genetics? Are you working with somebody to breed? What's right. that process look like? So we've hired, we have a... Uh, genetics guy on our team now, uh, oh, perfect. Harry Bluestein. Uh, it's been growing for about twenty years. He's pretty good at what he does. <laughs> so the I three mean, of us, twenty years in, you better be. Right? Yeah, yeah. So myself and Julian and Harry, we kind of sat down and discussed the strategy. And so we're going to have four hybrid strains, um, uh, four Jamaican strains crossed with other strains, some Cushes and some. Interesting. So kind of a way, because I, I think that that's a, a frustration even from people from Jamaica is that they, you know, try cannabis from other places and it's a different market in Colorado. Yeah. People want stronger, they want mm -hmm. different structure. Right. So I love that. It, it's kind of a way to marry the tradition, uh, which, you know, is very much sacrament on the island sure. with kind of this new cannabis culture. Absolutely. That's the whole idea. Uh, so, yeah. it, so it's 
kind of lamb spread crossed with, or is it a bunch of different? I'm sorry, I'm such a weed nerd right now. No, that I'm like, okay. tell me more. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, so we have two land race strains. Okay. And two Jamaican strains. They're not necessarily land race or heirloom strains. And um, Harry's done a pretty good job of um, uh, breeding uh, these strains and genetics. And uh, so we've got Juju OG, which will be released in, July, in uh, April, Heavenly Heights, uh, Lion's Domain, and Jungle Cheese. Those Jungle are the gore. Cheese. Oh, yeah. that might be my new favorite yeah. name in cannabis. <laughs> Jungle Cheese. Um, yeah. So, is that uh, I, one of the things that always trips me up is that here you are, national brand. Um, and Puerto Rico, I don't really know what we classify Puerto Rico as, dang. Um, but you're trying to man manage this and have consistency across all these states. So it's tough. is there a way to introduce these genetics, say the same thing that you're doing in Colorado, into Washington, into California, and how do you manage that? Uh, it's it's going to be tough. Yeah, uh, yeah it's going to be difficult, but um, we're bound by the restraints of policy regulation and sure. compliance at the same time. So. Um, We've, we were lucky enough to get our genetics into Puerto Rico as they were setting up uh, the, li the they our like licensee. Yeah, they something. have a grace period, I think, of 90 days or something like that to get all their genetics in. So we got them in there. So like, Harry, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were able to get a few. We got a few strains here in Colorado. We've got, obviously, we've got them in California. It's still kind of gray market there. So <laughs> we were able to slide in there. Uh, but it's it's tough. I mm -hmm. mean, you have to get in in the beginning uh, and get those strains into their catalogs early. Nice. Uh, uh, kind of like on a, on a bigger scale, what does cannabis mean to Julian? Because I think that that's, when I talk to people about, especially celebrity weed lines, I'm like, yeah, you know, Willie Nelson has his line. I, I don't think Willie Nelson really knows the difference between a lot of different types of pot, for right. example. I mean, he admitted on his tour bus, he's like, Indica Sativa, I don't really know. I got my weed ladies that handle that. Right. So I always like to know, you know, what what's uh, an artist's connection to cannabis? Yeah, I can't speak for all artists, and we sure. don't have any weed ladies on our team. So <laughs> I, it's just me, Julian, and, and Harry. Uh, so Julian has a very special connection to cannabis, in my own, own opinion. Mm -hmm. He's um, um, an advocate, um, an avid smoker, <laughs> uh, and he's extremely in tune. Right. Um, not as, you know, he's learning uh, as it relates to the technicalities and the genetics and strains and things of that nature. He's still learning. It's still a learning process. Sure. But his enthusiasm is through the roof. Yeah. yeah that's, and that's what counts, you know, like, uh, he's very engaged. Absolutely. Yeah. Very so cool. He's getting there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we all are. You and know, I'd like to bring him, maybe we can bring him on the show sometime in the future so he can speak for himself. Well, uh, I, I would love that. I don't want to speak for him. Join if you're watching out there, we would love to have you. And <laughs> thank you so much, Travis. We'll have a bit more with you in just a bit. But now uh, we have our own experts in the phrasing of blazing, Professor Pat, with this week's entry into the new cannabis lexicon. Edibles. Any cannabis product which is consumed orally and digested is considered inedible, whether it is the stereotypical pot brownie or one of the sophisticated orally active cannabis capsules, edibles are often recommended as the best choice for those who want to enjoy the benefits of cannabis without actually having to smoke anything. Cannabis consumed orally is quite a bit stronger and lasts longer, so it is always best to consume a little bit at a time in order to allow the full effects to develop. For example, I have asthma and can't smoke, so I just eat edibles instead. Thank you, Professor. Our second guest to the set is the founder of a recent award-winning distillate company. Join me in welcoming Jim Biviano to the Cannabis Show. Hey, Jake. How are Thanks you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's my pleasure, and thank you so much for coming on. I love it when the guests shake hands. I think you're the first two <laughs> gentlemen to do it. Do you want to do it again? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, going to do it again. You left me hanging. Gonna, That's all right. I got you, dude. All right. Look at this. <laughs> I love it. We have, we've generated some friendship already. <laughs> um, I want to ask you, so I, I want to make sure I get this right. Jim, 
Congrats on your win at the High West Cannabis Dab Off. Can you explain what a dab off <laughs> is? It's quite a thing to tell you the truth. Okay, right? so it's a it's a whole experience. It's an experience, right? So trying to differentiate amongst all the competitions that are out there today, I think what they were trying to do was bring in some of the uh, uh, the hottest names in concentrates yeah. and you know laws the way they are in the regulations. They make it difficult for public consumption. They pull up a bus to get on the bus, have a dab or a ten, whatever <laughs> whatever works for you, uh, and then you got to come back and you know be of sound mind to judge what you like the best, I guess. Okay, so there's a judging pro. So it's my understanding. All right, so people get a variety of different concentrates. Mm -hmm. They try them on a bus, as many <laughs> as ten. I, I think you could dab all day if you wanted. Okay, there's no limit as to how much you could dab, and then you come back and you score these concentrates somehow. Yeah. Well, okay, so what were you scored on? Yeah, so, you know, I think people were looking for, you know, flavor, maybe the structure of the concentrate, you know, concentrates taking on different forms these days. What's your preferred structure, I should yeah, ask? Yeah, well, then. we make distillates. So we make, okay. more specifically, high terpene, wide spectrum distillate. And, uh, you know, wide spectrum meaning? Uh, it uh, refers to the breadth of cannabinoids oh. that are active in, uh, in the concentrate. Okay, so you're talking about. THC, THCV, CBD, CBN. What other can cannabinoids are you working with? Right, CBG. CBG. CB and CBG is important because it's a precursor to THC. Okay. So uh, I think a lot of research will be will be coming to light uh, here shortly about that. Uh, CBC as well, CBL. Um, but you know the advantages are with with our process is uh, you, it's truer to the plant. Not okay. only in uh, what are the active cannabinoids and, and the active terpenes in the material that you're consuming, but um, it just keeps it closer to what Mother Nature's intent was, and you know that's one of our big goals at Ascend. So uh, we've been talking to uh, a few different people that are working, especially in the concentrates industry, on separating out terpenes, separating out cannabinoids, finding ways to mimic what the plant is doing, almost by taking these these parts and trying to reconstruct it. It sounds like. Like what you're doing might be more true to say the entourage effect where you're really getting what the plant intended in a concentrated form is that accurate that that's really accurate actually jake so uh, <laughs> 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 for one day and one day only, yeah. I might play one on the cannabis show. Um, but okay, so Jim, that's the 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 idea behind HPW. S -E? Yeah, I know. The acronyms are getting out of control. But <laughs> at, at the end of the day, to, to make it really simple, what we're doing is we're isolating the components that have value to you and your body, and we're removing everything else. And uh, when we put it all back together at the end, uh, we think, again, it's, it's truer to Mother Nature's intent. Uh, it's a cleaner high, um, and uh, there's, there's, there's benefits also in our product in that it's, it's pure. There's zero parts per million of uh, of any solvents and um, but it's, there's like a certain acceptable range of, of a PPM right there or would are. you say would you say any is too many no not necessarily and, okay. I, and I don't want to get into you know uh, in a, into a, well, a, I do. a fighting no, match just, about, <laughs> about no, it all but, you I'm know, genuinely curious yeah but at, at Ascend what's important to us uh, is producing a product that is going to meet the demands of someone who uh, isn't willing to put a hydrocarbon like butane or propane into their body on a regular basis. And so, you know, we're advancing the science to help consumers choose a product that's going to better align with their lifestyle. If you had something that registered anywhere above zero ppm, would you personally release it at Ascend? Um, no, it, it's it's not a part of, of, uh, of, of the fabric values? of our company. It's not. But okay. but then again, you know, on, on occasion, I like a dab of some live resin that you know is pretty high in butane. Um, but you know, we're we're looking to bring up put a product on market uh, that's going to appeal to someone who has a conscious lifestyle, someone who uh, wants something that uh, th there's not going to be any regret in the short term or long term about how they're using the plant. Now, how much of that is what goes in? Say, Travis has some you know great organic material that that he right. wants you to process for him versus me I, I am a dirty grower i don't know how to 
do anything with the plan. I'm just spraying it with Eagle something. Um, <laughs> does that, yeah, that's why I just don't want to get sued by any uh, chemical manufacturers. But uh, d does that affect? Oh, I mean, hundred percent. You know, okay. it's it's what goes in is is typically what comes out, and you know, it's it's our job to work with quality material and isolate the the most important compounds and deliver them in a fashion that uh, is is going to make sense for you on how you consume it. But I've, t I've talked to so many growers that are like, yeah, you know, this harvest didn't work out. We had powdery mildew or, mo you know, we're just going to blast it. Is there some stuff that you can kind of overcome through creating concentrates or is it like, yeah, really it's garbage in, garbage out? Well, so what, what we do is, a, is we extract with CO2 and then we distill via molecular and frac fractional separations and we are okay. actually yeah, able. Today and I, our minds just <laughs> subsequently blew. Okay, so you're, doing, you're on the molecular level. We can cannabis. get to a molecular level, yes. And But, but what that allows us to do is, uh, even if some material came in that was sprayed with something that uh, perhaps you weren't interested in, and we're able to find these these compounds and pull them out. And so um, it's it's not a goal of ours to work with dirty material. We always <laughs> want to work with, with quality material. But this, this is how the industry is advancing. It's, it's, it's fascinating, it's amazing. How long has this been the case? Because this, I mean, every time I hear the next thing, like if when I'm talking flour, I understand flour to a certain extent. There are a few things like mm -hmm. plant growth regulators where people are starting to have different conversations, but with concentrates, how long has the, this even been the case? Well, I mean, th this technology has been in the pharmaceutical world. Uh, it's, been, yeah. it's been in the food science world. Uh, and like anything else with this maturing industry, it just takes time and exposure. and. Uh, here it is. I, I expect it to be completely different a year from now. Honestly, really? I, I do. Yeah, because I think it, I, I look at something like rosin, and mm -hmm. everybody was pressing rosin a year ago, and that right. was the new big thing. And now it's acronyms. But you sound like you have a great acronym. <laughs> um, so, so at the end of the day, you win this dab off. I, okay, so we need to go way back. Just for so, our category, I want to make sure that's clear. Yeah. Okay. So we won the distillate category, and distillate's getting uh, a lot of momentum right now because of its ability to be to produce a really clean product. Um, but you know, not all distillates created equal. A lot of distillate is made today from uh, the leftovers of a butane hash oil extraction to get the remaining THC. What we're doing, and one or other, maybe two other companies are doing in Colorado, is we're applying that science, but with, uh, you know, uh, Mother Nature's intent, again, at the forefront in our extraction process. So that's why we use CO2. Okay, so it, if somebody, if I could just try and wrap my head around that. Yeah. Jim, I love it. You're blowing my mind. <laughs> Sorry so about what that. You're saying, no, 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 it's fine. So some people are essentially taking, like, the scraps and making, like, butane gravy or, like, distillate gravy out of it at the end of the day. Yeah, that's that's a good analogy. But I love gravy. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Pour it on. But also, yeah, I guess the starting product of just great meat, I would take o over the gra All right. Thank you for helping me Weed work gravy. through that. I, I, yeah. mean, I, I think we could work with that. <laughs> Yeah. So what's what's become the market for this? Because I know that education is always such a, a barrier for introducing, right. especially new concepts uh, to consumers out there. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are you seeing in terms of people that look at specific types of concentrates as a lifestyle choice? Right. So I, I, I think what we're seeing is the consumer is spending more time educating themselves and learning what it is that they're putting into their body. And that's just a function of a maturing industry, a maturing consumer. Um, uh, and as those trends continue, I think you're going to find folks gravitating towards product that more closely align with their lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? So Colorado is very active. It's very, um, it's, it's very health oriented. Uh, and I think you're going to find consumers that are going to be looking for f uh, plant material that was grown responsibly and concentrates that were extracted responsibly as well. And um, I, that's going to result in folks demanding to know what's on the label. But, like, like Wait, when okay. you're walking through Whole Foods and you look, you're, you find folks right. reading labels to make purchase decisions. This is where cannabis is going. Okay, so do you, because uh, outside of the label, I, there's a lot of debate about what the best consistency is. Um, you know, whether things should have, you know, little pockets, should they not? Um, what's, I think, what's something that somebody who's not familiar with concentrates can do to help identify something that could be either potentially harmful or something mm -hmm. that wouldn't align with their lifestyle in right cannabis? so you'd want to look at what solvent was used to right. extract 
the cannabis oil from the plant material. Um, after that, you just want to see what's active in the concentrate you're purchasing. So active ingredients, and that's going to be your cannabinoids, of which at Ascend we have six or more active cannabinoids in, in mm -hmm. all of our products. Um, it's going to be terpene content. Um, how, do, how do people know if something has a lot of terpenes? Is there like a telltale, uh, oh, yeah, that's terpy. It's the loud factor, right? Yeah. Yeah, as the kids say, right? Um, and yeah, no, but that's just really putting your nose into it, you mm -hmm. know, and you could look at, you know, the wine industry and how you would judge a glass of wine. And I think yeah. concentrates are, are right behind, following closely behind that industry. And, um, and so it's, you know, different strokes for different folks. Uh, you know, I expect there's going to be a great diversity of, of cannabis concentrates going forward. And um, uh, we just want to give the folks of Colorado an, an option that we think is, is great for the Colorado lifestyle. Awesome. What, uh, <coughs> last question, I have to know, what went into that distillate uh, that, that was the award winner? Yeah, so it was New York City Diesel, and uh, it's yeah, it's it's a phenomenal strain. And you know, I, honestly, I th I think it won because it just it tasted great, it smelled great. Uh, I, I you know I can't say after huh, a, a trip on the bus how many folks could actually tell you what got them more high. Than <laughs> 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 so it was the all other, about the loud factor. Yeah, I, it, it still it blows is. like my mom's mind though that she'd be like, oh, the thing that smelled like gasoline smelled the best. Eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously, Mom. That, and that had nothing to do with a bunch of people being on a bus for a while. Right. Just like really getting acclimated to it. Right. This pairs well with the gasoline to the running bus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pairing notes, that might be something you read on a label someday. <laughs> right. Right. Ooh. Yeah. All right, I like that. Uh, uh, pairs well with. <laughs> uh, I want to bring Tra uh, Travis back in, and I want to find out from both of you, although I feel like this is going to be a real softball, uh, which do you prefer consuming? flour concentrates or edibles starting with me sure flour yes i'm so a flour guy <laughs> yeah. anytime we get anybody I'm on it's school, just it blows yeah. my mind um preferred consumption for flour uh joints uh joints yeah yeah do you still twist them up or because i i prefer the cones Oh, I prefer cones. See, I'm never. I still haven't done a cone yet. Um, I have a yeah. friend that like swears by him, but he doesn't buy like the pre cones. He knows how to get the paper right. Get the and paper then... and the filter in. And... Oh, and the he does it himself. Or yeah, yeah. Oh. It, he's so weird like that. Yeah. Caesar, that I'm talking weird. about yeah. you, man. But oh, he, he he's just here. sits there. Uh, he's not here, but I'm just uh, pretending he's watching this. Uh, he definitely uh, is okay. not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, okay, so uh, a good cone. Um, do you have a favorite of the line that you've tried so far? The Juju OG. Juju OG. Yeah, Juju OG. I like. Is a it lot. is it like a sedative OG? No. Or is it is it no, like a true a, hybrid or more? Yeah, it's on a the, true hybrid, okay. sativa dominant. Okay. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Uh, and then uh, clearly. Edibles for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no ed edibles, uh, they, don't, they don't agree with me always. So, really? Ah, well, I, you know, I, li I like concentrates, but I, I also like flour. I mean, yeah. in order to make a great concentrate, you have to understand the plant. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah I, I agree. And here's the thing about edibles. I don't feel like I can control the outcome. Yeah. Ah. You know what I mean? Like a joint I can pick up, I can smoke for a little while, I'm feeling higher than I should, I put it down. Yeah, you get that immediate feedback, yeah, right? Yeah, edible... Once you start that train ride, you're, you're on. <laughs> yeah. and you can't get off. It's the silver bullet yeah. train. Yeah. Yeah. I've been you're just very... like, stop at anywhere USA. Oh, Not very good at the movie Lion, basically. Mm -hmm. just on a train. You know, I haven't there. seen no, it. The poor, he has Never the mind. kid that... All right, he got on that train and he couldn't get off. <laughs> <laughs> it was the story of a young boy on edibles. <laughs> <laughs> I have to see one. that. Um, all right, so do you, do you produce your flour in house? No, well? we, okay. we don't. We don't. So we're looking for relationships with with growers that have yeah, you know that grow according to the standards we hold our brand to. All right, and then would you be? Are you producing concentrate based on the flour? Do you uh, do you want to stick with the flour? No, and no. I we promise actually, I'm not matchmaking right now. I'm no, just I was, I was two steps I'm ahead of you. I was already. I, I was already. Most on the yeah, are, I was going to talk to you as soon as we. Most people yeah. are. <laughs> no, uh, actually, we're working on a strain specific line. Um, live rosin, um, uh, shatter and wax. Yeah, I yeah. think it's it's uh, now. I guess you really have to have those connections in this industry, right? You have to know the flower guy. Yep. You have to know the concentrate guy. Um, what's that process like working kind of across the aisle uh, for both of you? Yeah, I mean, it's we we like to say, and we we believe this firmly that 
the relationships we form in this industry are our greatest asset, more than the intellectual property we have in the lab. Um, and and so you know we're looking for partners that that have uh, an aesthetic and a set of values that that align with what we want to do with our brand. And uh, that's everything. And then you're just looking for good people. And you know, and our community here is still so small. And it's getting and I, smaller. And it's getting smaller. <laughs> it's getting smaller. And so finding you know finding those those quality relationships is job number one. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Travis, same for you. Same it's just a, a relationship building. So I imagine you're doing that on a much broader scale at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's all about the relationships. He's absolutely right. <clears throat> Finding the best people to work with is the hardest part. You find people who have, who are really good at what they do and they have this amazing skill to produce really good products, but then their business acumen is a lot less desire. You know, it's like uh, you try to find that balance of uh, skill and business acumen, and those are the people that I look for. And to me, that sounds like you're describing perfectly like the music industry, uh, <laughs> finding people that you want to work with, right. but that also like have the talent. Exactly. Because people, especially talented growers or, or concentrate makers, can be so, uh, I mean, I, hard to work with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Difficult. Uh, difficult. <laughs> right, right, right. Difficult. Um, what's the process look like when you're trying to set up these relationships? Is it going in and watching them do the work on, on a concentrate? Is it going in and touring a grow? Um, I, w what's that process like? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it starts with product first, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, our due diligence is, that's, hey, let's, let's go find some of their flour, let's bring it back. Secret shop them? Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's part of it. You, you want to see them in their natural state, right? So, Ooh, secret shoppers are out there. Yeah, they, they are. Okay. And, yeah, and then it's... Well, I, just, I feel like I just blew your cover. We're going to have to get you an even larger beard and a hat. Okay? It's doable, it's doable. Yeah. Um, and I look like the rest of the hipsters in Denver, but... Um, <laughs> that that <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you know, and then it's it's always interesting finding out where people came from before they were in cannabis, right. yeah. uh, and that's a telltale sign yep. sometimes. Absolutely. You know, are they coming yeah. from the corporate world, or are yeah. they coming from another entrepreneurial pursuit that you know would pay dividends for them entering this this industry? Sure. Yeah. Have you ever secret shopped? <laughs> uh, actually, I haven't secret shopped, but I sent somebody to secret shop. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, I always say Bud doesn't lie, and yeah. what's on there, what's on the shelf, is you know always the best reflection of what somebody's up to. Mm -hmm. And for us, I mean, we, the environment in which they grow or, or process or whatever, I like to go in and check that facility out and make sure that they are who they say they are, and right. you know they're compliant and those sort of things. Those are most important. Yeah, I, I talk to a lot of growers that I never see at their grow. <laughs> right. I'm like, yeah. okay, you yeah. know, it's good to know who's who's putting in the work. Right. Um, exactly. All right. Well, that takes us to the time of the show where we put our guests to the test with the pot quiz. Are you gentlemen ready? Ready. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna hate me for this one, Jake. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, all right. Well, we will start. Let's we'll start with you, Jim. Uh, question number one. A main man claims, a main man, <laughs> it sounds like I was saying, a main man, yeah, main man, but a man from the state of Maine <laughs> claims that <laughs> marijuana growers are interfering with blank. Is it A, commercial lobster businesses, B, ham radio signals, C, heroin dealers, or D, Maine Canada relations? Hmm. Well, I, I must have missed that article. <laughs> so uh, came out I, this I'm, morning. Yeah. I'm so sorry to do that. <laughs> no, it's all right. I can read them to you again. Uh, I don't think it's going to help. Well, given Maine's proximity to Canada, let's go D. That is incorrect. <sighs> all right, Travis, the chance to steal. Is it commercial lobster businesses, ham radio signals, or heroin dealers? Commercial lobster businesses? Ooh, all right. We have a chance to go back to Jim. What? Uh, two options, ham radio signals or heroin dealers. <sighs> I, I guess there might be some need to use radio, so let's go with uh, the radio signals. That is correct. So, oh, hey, someone had to get there finally. Jim with yeah. one point. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, apparently, so there's an FCC rating for grow lights, but a lot of companies lie lights. about being FCC rated. Oh, okay. So if you have wow. these, uh, the defunct lights, people can go around with their ham radio and find your grow. 
Oh. So yeah. a, a tip out there for anybody if you who's lost your grow. growing yeah. and doesn't want anyone to... Yeah, <laughs> I lost, lost my grow. <laughs> this is Dude, a problem. my grow? Don't <laughs> worry, I'll bust out yes, my man. ham radio. <laughs> no, it was here. <laughs> Uh, uh. All right. Uh, question number two is going to go to Travis. In recent meetings over Denver's social use initiative I-300, one of the most contentious issues has been the relationship between marijuana and what? Is it A, commercial advertising, B, children's education, C, all alcohol consumption, or D, really sweet nature videos? I thought people were going to laugh at D. They <laughs> 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 got dead silent. Um, <laughs> I would say alcohol. That is correct. Yeah. All right, so we got it all tied up, two points or one point apiece. Uh, that's how scoring works. Math is hard. It is, especially when <laughs> you're adding me, one yeah. to nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they can't figure out uh, the drinking along with social use mm -hmm. here. And yeah. that makes sense. I mean, right? I mean, if, if Denver's doing an amazing thing by bringing this to the public, uh, let's not let something like alcohol and impaired driving get in the way. Mm -hmm. Is there, how do, how do you come up with a system to make that work? Because I feel like for a lot of businesses, you're not allowed to sell pot. You're mm -hmm. not allowed to sell alcohol. People can come and consume. You've got to make it work for businesses on some level. Right. Um, and I look at events like concerts, every concert I've ever been to, people smoking also drinking mm -hmm. um it hasn't been the end of the world i would what's the answer is it just mandatory lift an uber for everybody <laughs> that's a good start you come in and you're just like hey this is my uber driver i mean i mean it's it's the responsibility uh, you know of of denver and, yeah. and you know the great folks that put this initiative into place to make sure that it's a success and so you know things like alcohol that you know could get in the way really uh, of it, it being a success uh, i think i think they're they're writing the bill and that hopefully they get it uh they get it live here soon we yeah. need places to go consume right and drink lots of coffee apparently <laughs> yeah. right. Right. Uh, all right it's going to come back to jim i believe question three a man sentenced to federal prison over his scheme to send edibles through the mail went by which alias is it a the health nut b the hamburglar c benjamin danklin or D, the totally legal Dr. Viagra. <laughs> so I think I remember reading this. This, this was in Massachusetts, and I, I believe it was the health nut? That is correct. Um, he was shipping to all over. I uh, was doing chocolate bars through the mail. Don't do that. Don't they do, do that. not care for that. And <laughs> the judge was like, screw you, man. You read through the judge. He was like, I think marijuana is the worst thing, along with drugs. You're ruining our society. Mm. Uh, he got a year and one day in federal prison. Mm. Wow. Sorry, health nut. Yeah. Uh, all right. Chance to tie it up here. Back to Travis. Uh, we've been talking about upcoming Colorado legislation on the show. HB 171082 <laughs> is a measure. Oh, that one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the the best one, known of all of them. Uh, uses the acronym BEST, B-E-S-T, to stand for what? Is it A, budding education state tuition? Is it B, building excellent schools today? Is it C, banning extra state taxes? Or is it D, bongs established only for smoking tobacco? <laughs> I'm gonna Only for his lowercase. <laughs> I'm going to roll with B. That is correct. Building excellent schools today. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie. <laughs> and so we will go to our tiebreaker. Oh, and this is such a terrible question. <laughs> I was really hoping I didn't have to read this. Uh, all right, so the way this is going to work, uh, you can buzz in at any time by saying your own first name. I'm going to read you <laughs> a cool. fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> right. okay. uh, I'm going to read uh, the fill in the blank. Uh, if you don't know just from the blank, I'm going to just start reading multiple choice answers. Okay. Again, remember, don't give me the letter of the multiple choice. Give me your name as the buzzer <laughs> and then the multiple choice letter. Here we go. Corey Stapleton, Montana's chief election official, made the following statement recently. All three states, Oregon, Washington, and Colorado, they do blank, and they're all marijuana all the time states, too. Is that what you want? Because that's what you're going to get. What was the blank? Is it they do all-you-can-eat buffets, and they're all marijuana Ooh. all the time states, too? I hope Is so. it B, 
uh, they do all mail-in ballots, and they are all <laughs> marijuana all the time states, too. We're going to get through this, gentlemen. Uh, they do C, all new gentlemen's clubs, and they're all the marijuana all the time states, too. Or D, they do all drive through pharmacies, and they're all... Jim. What's that? Jim. All right, Jim. That's, I'm f speaking in third person. It's, just, it's very uncomfortable. Jim, Jim says B. B is correct. <laughs> Jim, Jim is B. our winner. Congratulations. If you do the mail-in ballots, you're going to get all the marijuana. They're really worried. Voter suppression alive and well in the great state <laughs> of Montana. Thanks so much to Travis Belcher of Juju Royal and Jim Biviano of Ascent Industries for joining us. And a special thanks to everyone who has been rating and reviewing the podcast. The Cannabis Show is available anywhere you listen to fine podcasts. For Janae Burris and the entire cast of The Cannabis Show, I'm Jake Brown. We'll see you next week. Guys, thank you so much. I'm allowed to lose the truth or win. I'm all in. I'm going in any pot. So you'll be raising at the end. I'll say it again. Ain't afraid to get in. I'll be going for the jackpot with ace in my hand. I'm raw. Hey, we made it through two episodes. Thank you.